Rules around transportation are a big issue right now, both for trains within Canada and for travelers entering the country. New railway safety measures are being brought in after a wildfire destroyed more than 90 percent of the village of Lytton, British Columbia, and killed two people. Several investigations are underway to determine whether a freight train may have sparked the fire. Transportation Minister Omar Algabra is in Mississauga, Ontario. Minister Algabra, welcome back to the show. David, good to be with you. Sir, we, we know there are concerns that the wildfire that destroyed Lytton may have been caused by the sparks from a train that, that was rolling through town. What is the latest on that front? What do we know? Uh, David, let me just first say um, that uh, we have, as Transport Canada has been cooperating with in, the investigators, um, and I know the railway companies have been in, uh, cooperating with the investigators. Obviously, we have heard that there's speculation that it may have been caused uh, uh, by one of the trains. So we want to do everything we can to get to the bottom of it, to figure, it, figure out what caused the fire. Uh, in the meantime, though, we have acted immediately. We have implemented um, um, uh, new additional measures uh, to ensure that um, uh, trains and train operators are prepared with additional measures, including speed um, uh, control, reducing speed, including fire suppression measures. So we've added new measures to ensure um, uh, that uh, extra caution or precautions are taken. But you sh sh should we look at these restrictions that you brought in and conclude from that that you think a train may have been the likely cause of this fire? Uh, no, no, David. Um, uh, obviously, um, you know, fires may, may have been caused by a train, but we don't know that. Mm -hmm. and, and the reality is that it would be prudent of us to act immediately. And also, I want you and your viewers to know that we've already had measures in place uh, uh, to ensure that trains do not uh, cause or trigger fire. We also had measures in place that ensured that uh, trains are equipped with uh, fire suppressions. But as you know, like every other measure, there's always room for improvement. And when this happened, we uh, came together and decided to find opportunities to strengthen these existing rules, make sure that given the sense of urgency that exists, given the environmental and climate uh, reality that we're facing, that we've strengthened the existing measures and to make sure uh, that uh, there are all precautions are taken. Now, the new order requires the conductor of any train running through the, the Lytton area, or I guess a fire risk area, be responsible for reporting any blazes or, or smoldering areas to rail traffic control. But neither CN Rail nor CP reported any incidents uh, to the safety board after, after this fire. So how, how effective can this measure be in mitigating the risk that trains pose? Well, this is an additional measure, like you said, and, and it is in a way to condition train operators that perhaps, I, I know they were trained to do this, but now this is an added reminder of the responsibility that train operators have. Uh, and so we expect them to add extra caution, extra awareness uh, as they're operating trains. So uh, we think it, and I, in and on its own is not enough. We have, as I said, we've added other measures, including reducing speeds, including making sure that there's far, fire suppression uh, equipment on site uh, and that reaction to fires are done e immediately. So this was just one measure of the, uh, uh, of the suite of measures that we've introduced in, uh, recently. And, and on, that's the mitigation side. But on the investigation side, Minister, how quickly do you think we'll know what was the likely cause of this fire? Like, when do you think, uh, what, what is the timeline for that investigation? I, I don't really know, David. We're, I, you know, I'm leaving it to the authorities. Uh, the RC, uh, British Columbia's RCMP is involved. BC Wild like uh, wildfire are involved. Now also the Transportation Safety Board are involved. Uh, so as you can tell, there's uh, uh, lots of experts and, and, and specialists who are investigating this. We will do whatever we can to support this investigation. And we also have encouraged CP and CN uh, to do the same. Well, you've put new regulations on trains. Uh, First Nation leaders are have ha in the area have said they're prepared to block the trains if railway companies and the provincial government don't uh, address their concerns about recovery plans for the communities and, and, and the rail traffic in the region. And the prime minister met with some of those indigenous leaders last week. Do you know where things stand, where it comes to these demands or concerns, or is the risk of a rail blockade still a live one? Uh, David, engaging with indigenous leaders uh, uh, is critical. 
um, especially you know when you can imagine when when you see when they see their homes have been devastated and impacted by this fire it's incredible like I, I don't think I can stress enough how important it is to engage with indigenous leaders and their representatives uh, so uh, we are this work is ongoing from immediately right after uh, the fire we've also convened Transport Canada convened uh, train operators, CN and CP, as well at the table with British Columbia government representative. So we've been making a lot of progress uh, through these discussions. I know there's still more work to be done, um, but this engagement is important and, and, and uh, their feedback and their input is critical to uh, actions moving forward. I want to switch gears, if I can, to pandemic travel. And we're about nine days away, really, uh, from when the, the current order in Council on Canada-U.S. border restrictions uh, expire and will need to be rolled over and updated in some capacity. Do you have a sense yet of exactly what we might see in nine days and, and what you need to do to adjust the measures that are in place using the app and the uploading of vaccination certificates? What might need to be improved to make things go smoother? David, as we promised Canadians, um, we are uh, slowly uh, and in a phased approach opening our borders and adjusting our travel uh, measures, uh, particularly given the rate of vaccination, particularly given the uh, COVID situation at home. Um, um, so um, stay tuned. Uh, we have we will be announcing soon phase two of uh, the opening uh, or easing adjustment of those travel measures. So stay tuned um, as we are working out the final touches on what phase two is going to look like. When, when your colleague Bill Blair was on the show last with me, uh, at any rate, the public safety minister said the next phase would be vaccinated travelers from anywhere in the world would be allowed to come into Canada uh, once we got to a certain vaccination threshold, presumably the 75-75. The, the question would be the date. I, is that still the direction you're headed for the next round of easing of restrictions? Um, I don't know if that's going to happen in the next phase, uh, but it certainly is a goal of us to get there. Um, um, the more Canadians are vaccinated, uh, the easier for us to manage uh, uh, the border um, uh, and travel measures. But also it is important, as Minister Blair and as the Prime Minister said, uh, for us to be cautious and prudent about uh, travelers who we are work welcoming into Canada. Uh, so the more, uh, you know, travelers who are fully vaccinated, of course, will uh, be able to enter Canada. I just can't tell you uh, if that's going to happen in the next phase or the phase after that. What would be the step in between that then from where we are now to letting travelers from anywhere? Would it just be vaccinated Americans? Would that be the middle step uh, to towards letting everybody from all over the world? Is, is that what we're talking about here? David, I know you're trying to get news out of me, and I would love to share a news with you and your viewers. Uh, but as I said, final touches are being worked on, and when they are finalized, uh, I will share them with you. Okay, and do you have an update on where you're going to be in terms of uh, the next step in vaccine proof? I know there was a conversation about vaccination passports that, you know, working out privacy issue with the provinces because they're the owners of the information moving beyond the Arrive Can app. Uh, can we expect an update on that soon or are we still looking at the fall? Well, um, as you said, right now we are using Arrive Can uh, that uses, um, uh, you know, a, a smart technologies to identify, uh, it scans the vaccine certificate and identify the type of vaccines. Um, that is going to continue to be our tool to welcome uh, passengers. Um, as far as the phase two of the proof of the vaccination proof, we are still working on it. That uh, work is being led by my colleague, Minister Marco Medicino, but certainly Transport Canada is supporting their effort to get there. Okay, Minister Algaber, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, David. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.